welcome back to Paint by Blunders. Uh, today we are looking at the Six Sigma Fusiliers, which is the Rifleman, and we are going to do them in the Lethis style. Uh, hopefully this tutorial helps because with all the new cities models, they are covered in detail, can be a little bit intimidating at first, but um, hopefully this method will get them on the table in a timely fashion so that you can shoot your opponent off the board. But yeah, enjoy the video. If you like it, learnt anything, want to see more of it, please do uh, sub, like, comment, all that normal thing that everyone asks you to do in every video, but it does really help. Anyway, enough of my waffling. Uh, thanks again. Let's get to it. So this is our primed fusilier. I've primed it in black. I used an airbrush this time, mainly because I went to go outside to use a rattle can and it was not the ideal weather and for those of you who have never done it before you need ideal conditions when you're prime with a rattle can because otherwise you end up with all sorts of problems so as you can probably see on this model even from the base coat level there are so many little details so this is my way of trying to make them pop enough on the tabletop without giving them loads and loads of time and basically without using too many contrast paints so stage one, Dark Plum, the Ninjon signature paint from Pro Acrylic. We're going to use this on his shield and his clothes. Uh, it's just a very good starting point, great coverage, but you don't have to. If you don't have this paint, you're thinking, ugh, I don't want to go spend four quid on another paint. Honestly, don't bother. Just darken up your Screamer Pink. This is the darkest point of the model. I wouldn't panic too much. And we're just blocking it in. Um, I'm just trying to be careful and this is what he looks like and we're just going to go over all those same areas again as I say with that screamer pink trying to avoid the darkest points but we are going to put some shade over this and it will blend it all out a little bit anyway so again just try and be neat with all the other sections but don't panic too much and I know with Lethis uh, they normally have like the darker shields but I really like the pinky tones that they have on the clothes and I think when my opponent looks at my army that's hopefully going to do some shots, I think the pink looks pretty good on the shields. Brush-wise, I'm using a size 1 Winsor & Newton Series 7, but I am slightly leaning towards the Raphael brushes. I've got a couple of those that I've been using and they are beautiful. So we're going to start moving on to the metallics. Rune Lord Brass for a lot of the shoulder pads, the edging on the shields the legs on his shield. We will be using another metallic as well, but it will just complement against it and I think it pops really well against the Screamer Pink. Again, I'm using the same Series 1 Windsor & Newton, but use whatever size you feel most comfortable with. Just trying to be neat and again, blocking in the metallics. Our next metallic is Chainmail by Vallejo. I'd use this pretty much on every model. I absolutely love it. I think it's got fantastic coverage. All the little metallic pigments in it I think look great. And yeah, flows great, comes out the bottle well. I haven't tried airbrushing it, but off a brush, fantastic. Once again, Series 1 by Windsor & Newton. And I'm just, yeah, going around filling in all the little silver bits. And there's so many crazy little details on these models. GW did fantastic. So Eshin Grey and Administratum Grey. I want the lighter gloves, but I know the coverage isn't great over black. And like I say, I'm trying to figure out a way to make these quite efficient and not super fast. I don't want to speed paint them, but I also don't want them to look... You know, I don't want to spend hours on each one. So I mix these two, maybe 70-30, just to try and help it with its coverage. And you can see it works really well. Uh, for the little skirt bits at the bottom, you may want to just change that ratio ever so slightly, just to give it a bit more of a, a bit more of a contrast, so maybe a little bit more of the darker colour. And the same with the shield at the front, the little emblem. Uh, you might want to make that lighter than the gloves. But that is a choice for you. As I say, I've done it about 70-30 for the gloves in favour of the um, Administratum Grey. 
and probably 50-50 for the darker sections of the skirt. It's not a skirt, but you know what I mean. With the shield, I did start with a darker base, just to add a few more layers to try and make it as smooth as possible, just in case you want to add any transfers or try and do any freehand stuff, just to give it the best canvas possible. Rhinox Hide. Now I'm going to use this for the little pouches on the back, which I assume carries a bit of ammo and or black powder. Um, the belts. But you can use this, pick out anything you want. You could just do it all black if you want to save even more time. But yeah, Rhinox Hide, great coverage, shades well. Again, as you can see, with this method, what I'm trying to do is block in as many colours as I can and use a single wash over the whole model. That's where we're going to save some time. And it really helps with touching in any mistakes. Vallejo Model Colour Black. This is for the shaft of the gun. We're going to do the top sort of chest strap. Uh, and his boots. Again, you could pick these out brown. You could pick it on brown on just a few of them if you wanted to just, you know, mix it up so not everyone is completely the same. And yeah, we're just blocking it in. And look at that. Even at this level, it's pretty, it's looking pretty tidy now. But one thing I noticed is I didn't do the lining or the trim of the uh, the purple skirt. So I'm going to come in with bright neutral grey from Pro Acrylic, which I think is quite a lot like grey seer. And I'm just putting it on, barely diluting it, because when it's such a small area, I just want to give it a good bit of colour before we shade everything. And yeah, it's a really good paint. I've never used it before. And yet again, I'm using the Winsor & Newton Series 7, size 1, which, upon editing this, the easy way to tell if I'm using that brush is it's got a bright green blob. So that's pretty much blocked in. I'm just going to quickly put a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone on the face. And we're going to move on to shading the entire model with Rattling Grime. But... We're not going to use it straight out of the pots because that will absolutely destroy this model. I am going to dilute it with a little bit of contrast medium. 60-40. Uh, I would always say when you're doing this and you're covering the entire model, dilute it more than you might want and then just add a second coat or just recess it or pick out parts that you really want to make darker because especially when we're shading over some of these lighter colours like the greys, if you put too much on, you will absolutely destroy it. So that is what we're going to do. Not destroy it, shade it. And after the shading is done, like so, you can leave him battle ready like that. But we're going to come in just with the same base colours that we started with. So Screamer Pink to start over all those pinky purple bits. And we're just going to layer it up. Trying to leave the darkest points just to add that contrast and a bit of depth. With the shield, I'm going to dry brush a lot of it because it has that woody texture. And there you go. So even with just that one highlight on the Screamer Pink, it looks great. You could, Again, every one of these stages you could stop and go, that'll do. Ten of them will look good. So we're going to go back to the gloves now. We're going to use that the Pro Acrylic Grey and the Administratum mixed. And we're just going to essentially edge highlight it. I don't want to layer it up fully. Again, trying to save a little bit of time. So just on the gloves, I'm just picking out the fingers, the knuckles any of the raised edges just to define some of the shape. 
The only real exception to this would be the emblem on the front of the shield. Uh, you can go darker or lighter, depending on your taste, because I know if you're using some of the Lethis transfers, I think it has like a cream skull with uh, a black eagle, or black crow, sorry. So maybe the super light emblem won't be good for the transfer, but I'm not big on transfers so I'm making my emblem at the front quite bright so I'm just going to use a few layers water down and bring it up to almost the pure pure neutral or pure neutral gray light neutral gray and there you go it really pops then continuing the trend of the base colors I'm just going to dry brush a little bit of the chainmail just on the raised edges same coup with dry brushing just lightly flicking it over barely any paint on the brush just to make it look a little bit chipped and battle worn I want these guys to look clean but not too clean then we're going to come in with the Rhinox hide and just pick out some edges any raised areas on anything we did brown, like this mallet, um, his little bag at the back, any of the pouches, um, and the belts, etc. You can do this with a dry brush, you can rough edge highlight, but yeah, the choice is yours. I even show a little bit of dry brushing on the pouch at the back, just to try to give it a little bit of texture as opposed to harsh highlighted lines. If you did want to push it further, you could just use a lighter brown. I would mix in a small amount of Rhinox Hide just to make a lot of a mid-tone and just highlight it further, but I'm not going to. So this is our guy with just the base tones, a bit of wash, and then the base tones again. But I'm going to put a tiny little bit more effort into the main focal colour, which is that Screamer Pink. So I'm going to use a little bit of the magenta from Pro Acrylic. And I'm, all I'm going to do is just dry brush over the shield just to have something really pop. So when you've got 10 of them lined up, it's going to look quite effective. And with his clothes, I'm literally just doing the highest edges. And there's not many. This takes 30 seconds really to do. And it looks great. It makes all the difference. Now I'm going to call this done. The magenta's on. That's as light as I'm going to go. I'm now just looking at the basing and thinking that I'll go with something like a light desert sort of colour. Just because those lighty browny creams will really work well in this scheme. And that's what I'm going to do. So, I used Ake Interactive Desert Ground in a Tub. Agrax Earthshade on the top and then just use pigment powders to finish it up. Better than battle ready, but we're not going to win any golden demons. Thank you once again for watching this Paint by Blunders tutorial. Um, if you enjoyed it, please consider giving us a little sub, a little thumbs up, and hopefully we will see you in the next one. <laughs>